Okay, from this point forward, I'm going to be doing uh, the configuration of Debian Wheezy from a terminal uh, through SSH. So, uh, part of the reason is is because I can't really record without using a webcam if I was doing the uh, actions from the main system. And the other reason is because I wanted to show that it can be done completely from command line. Um, <clears throat> in addition to the fact that now I can also show some of the guide that I'm working on. It's not finished, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, so I'm going to follow along with this guide. We're going to start by logging in. Um, I'm going to use my username, and I believe the IP address should be this right here. Right. right. Part of the reason that happened is because I still have an old key, so let me get rid of that. Okay, so the system generates a key for us automatically, but it's not a trusted key until you've selected it. So, and now we are currently logged in to our server. So, um, this one step here you've already followed, as well as this one here and this one here. So we've already installed uh, EFI Grub. We've already installed SSH and sudo. We've added our user to the sudoers group, so if we type sudo now, we will be able to run it. I'm going to install some utility packages, including parted, samba, ntp, screen, and p7zip full. Um, you don't have to install p7zip or screen or parted or samba, but you will want samba if you want to share disks between virtual machines or if you want to share any files at all in general. You will want screen if you're going to be doing any compiling over SSH. Um, and it's just in general a helpful utility to have. All of these are really. Parted is for our partition management. It's a command line partition management tool. So, uh, But because we are using uh, GPT partitions, I believe FDisk will not be able to do everything we need it to if we ever had to work with our system. So, <clears throat> In any event, you'll notice that I was just first time run uh, with sudo, so it asked me for my password and it went through all that for us. <clears throat> so, NTP is entirely necessary because without it, we won't be able to, um, how do I put this, we won't be able to synchronize time on the server, and if you have unsynchronized time, it can lead to very bad things. So I highly recommend having NTP installed. Um, it's very useful. <clears throat> so I also am using this system for development purposes, so I'm going to be installing a series of development tools. These are 100% optional. If you don't want to use the system for development of any kind, you can completely skip this segment, or subsection anyways. So we're going to install these. Now for the most part, if I list any dependencies, or if I list any packages I'm installing, it should automatically cover the dependencies. I tried my best to make sure that in the later portions of this video, that if there were any dependencies that may not have been installed through aptitude, that they are in the list when we do the installation. So, For the GUI environment, and again this is also optional, we're going to be installing these packages. Uh, genome session, terminal, and screensaver are the bare minimum you need to make it so that your system has a GUI, has terminal, has a screensaver, which actually handles the sleeping and locking of your computer, uh, and GDM3 is for the login. GKSU is for SU or sudo activity uh, from the GUI. So if you needed to modify a file uh, with sudo or with root privileges uh, through the GUI, you have the ability to do that. And these others are just libraries to cover um, problems if uh, if we happen to encounter them. Uh, for the most part, I encountered problems where if I didn't have IA32 libsgdk, uh, it created problems with certain features of Genome. So, same for the rest of these. This step is not entirely true. I actually installed just XServer XORG Core previously and was able to successfully get uh, SDL running without any problems. I thought that we might need the full XORG and XORG dev, but we did not. 
So, and I'll be demonstrating it later on in this video. Uh, this is a bare bones installation of Genome 3, so it should take about five minutes to download and install, which is pretty awesome considering that the installation from the CD takes about 30. Now, like I said, it is a bare bones installation, so it won't contain uh, any of the utility packages and various software that come with the full Genome 3 package, um, which would be like GIMP, uh, Image Editor, uh, LibreOffice, and various other things, none of which I used ever. So, not really a big deal to me, but if you're worried about that sort of thing, you might want to note it. Uh, the development packages install a whole bunch of stuff, so this is a time-consuming one. And of course we have optional GUI additions, for example if we want sound we would install also base and we'd initialize it. Once it's been initialized, after that every time you boot the system uh, you should get, uh, should get audio. So, But once we've installed all these GUI packages I'm going to be rebooting the system so that we have um, GUI support. And I will be demonstrating some of these in a later video from video recording so I can show you that they are actually working. <clears throat> it's funny, this is only one of several segments of guide. As you can see, I've got a lot of work. Okay, time for our next package set. This is another whole slew of packages. <clears throat> and this is going to install our GUI for us. Again, this only takes roughly five minutes, give or take. Okay, so now that the installation has completed, we're going to reboot the system. And if all goes well, we should have a GUI login available to us on the main server. So, check your main monitor if you're still connecting through SSH. <clears throat> There we go, system's back up. So I'm going to log back in through SSH so I can complete this portion of the video. We're going to install also base so I can get audio. Okay, our next step is going to be installing all of these packages. Python XDG is required for Quake. Font Manager is for fonts and managing them. Genome Disk Utility and Screenshot are simply useful utilities. Now there's a bug with Quake. When it's installed with Genome 3 on Debian for some reason, it will not start at boot. This is because it attempts to do PyNotify using notification.show and that uh, can't trigger when you're first starting up the system. Uh, it needs to wait a couple of seconds, and because that fails, the entire application crashes. So, to fix that, we're going to edit Quake. This is surprisingly easy, unlike what you might think. Right, notification dot show, and there. So there are two lines that have it, here and here. And only one of them technically needs to be modified, but I figured I may as well do both.
we go. That right there will fix the bug. Next, we want to create an auto start process, which we can do right here. You can either, well, it's probably easier not to copy and paste this necessarily, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a directory called auto start. Okay, well, let's see, dot config. Right, because I haven't logged in yet, none of these directories have been created, so I'm actually going to log into the GUI really quick right now. The first time load will create all of the directories I need, so I'm going to exit this and reconnect in a minute. See, there we go. So now we have a config directory. So let's make that directory we needed and then travel to it. Now, technically, what we're doing is we're copying user shared applications slash wake dot desktop to here. The default one here, the reason I didn't make this an option is because it will automatically try to disable auto start and we don't want that. So we do want it to start automatically. And that's it. Next, we're going to modify our sources for aptitude. And the reason this is, is because we need aptitude to download Google Chrome which has its source elsewhere. So we're going to do sudo vi at apt sources. Now obviously you could follow my directions directly if you really wanted. Um, they will work. But I'm just trying to take some shortcuts right now. So Right, sudo. There we go. So we've added a key, and we're going to run sudo aptitude update. And what this will do is it will allow us to download Google Chrome. Um, I use Google Chrome Unstable. You're welcome to use any, any browser you prefer. This is just my recommended setup. So I'm going to be installing EOG for graphics, Genash for flash files, VLC for uh, multimedia, and GTK record my desktop so I can record the future activities from the desktop. So now when you install Google Chrome it will actually add its own um, file with this on it. So we're gonna need to remove this from our .deb files or our from our .deb files from our sources list after we've uh, installed it. So otherwise it'll uh, throw an error every time you run update saying there's a duplicate content. So also, yes, this source is stating um, stable main, which is squeeze currently, but it does work on Wheezy. I've had no problems installing it and using it fully, so I've been very happy with it, actually. So I'm going to download <coughs> Spline Text 2. Usually I do it through the GUI on uh, the main machine there, but since we're connected through SSH, let's do it this way. Now first we're going to remove that from aptitude sources. Because if I do apt D, we'll see there's now a Google Chrome.list file in there, and that contains the very same thing that we just had. So by removing it, we should be able to fix a problem in the future. Now I'm just going to run this to make sure it uh, works right. So what I've done is I've copied this link so I can download it using wget.
See, and there we go. This is going to extract the files. I'm going to remove the zip compressed file. Then I'm going to move this into user local. And we're going to go to user local. And we're going to enter sublime text 2. And we're going to create a sublime text symlink, which will allow us to run sublime text from the command line. Okay, next we want to create a desktop entry. Um, this way we can access it from the GUI. And this will be in use our local applications. Sub L dot desktop is what we're going to create. And I'm going to paste this in, delete all these indents. And because this is not sublime text, but rather sublime text two, and we're just going to modify that and we'll be all set. So now if you access your GUI, you'll have that available from the GUI when you select your applications. This right here is what we're going to add to our defaults.list and it's a MIME types modifier which will allow us to automatically redirect any attempts to open certain text files with sublime text which is what I want. So Now there are alternative ways to go about doing this that aren't specific to the entire system but user specific but because I just want these to apply globally I don't care. So you're welcome to look those up if you want. And at this point, we've successfully configured Debian Wheezy. Uh, my next video will be compiling a Linux kernel, and I will be doing it from the desktop uh, using Record My Desktop.